Glad you are back because now that we are all hydrated, we can talk about Father's Day. Oh, yes. It coming is up. Sunday. Maybe you and your dad, you just want to spend some time outside. So here was some health advice to keep in mind when you go outside is Dr. Ryan Dick from Entira Family Clinics. Nice to see you. Hey, thanks for having me. Listen, getting outside, very important though. In Absolutely. general, we should all be spending a little more time always, outdoors. Always, always more time. time. Yeah. But you got to look out for that poison ivy. Yeah. This so I'm a scout one. dad too. Oh, so wow. My, my daughter's in scouts. Nice. Nice. And so we, you know, it's always good to be able to like know which things you should be touching or not touching. And I don't think I could identify poison ivy. I'll tell you, and I, I like know a lot of plants. Yeah. I well, can't. if you're gonna do trail walking, right. you know, like it's good to kind of. I mean, if you stay on the trail, you're probably gonna be safe anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you are gonna be doing like some wandering around, there's lots of poison ivy. Okay. And, you know, it's a little tricky, but really shiny leaves, and they always talk about the leaves of three, leave them be. So That's what my daughter will be very proud of me that I brought be. this topic up. Okay. Yeah. But long pants, long sleeves, yeah. that can even help just give you a little bit of a barrier? Right. Well, those, those oils won't get on your... You won't, will just get on your clothes. I mean, you, if you're going to be walking through the woods yeah. and then you throw them in the wash right away, you're going to be able to get all those natural oils off. But if you do get them on your legs and then you scratch a little with your hands and then you touch your forearm a little bit, then there it is right there. Yep. And it's a very, very thick oil. You can't see it, but it's a thick oil. And then I've had a couple cases where... All of a sudden, it's like all over yourself. It spreads so quickly. So quickly. So what's the antidote? What's the remedy? Getting it off? Or do you put something on top of well, it? You, you, um, there, I mean, steroid ointments are usually the key, okay. but there have been a couple times where if it's just all over your body, because like you just kind of naturally touch everything, you scratch on something and then touch something else, um, you do sometimes have to use oral medication. Oh too. my gosh. Yeah. Time and crying, that's what gets Holy it. Holy no. moly, I've never There's had that. crying. Yeah. Okay, skin cancer, let's talk about that. We've got right. to protect ourselves always right. from it. I, I mean, <clears throat> I think guys generally kind of poo-poo a sunburn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the reality is, like, you know, we, we can all be better about wearing sunscreen. Sure. I like to tell the guys, like, keep it really simple. Wear, wear a hat, find a hat that you really like the appearance of, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it just will protect your face, protect your neck. Um, and then we, when it comes to like the sunscreen itself, whether it's a, you know kids or adults, um, 60 SPF is usually the way to go. You don't have to spend tons I of like money it. on like 100 SPF stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 50, 60 usually does what does the trick. Knock it down. Yes. That hat coverage, though, is great because great. the sunscreen does wear off after a while, and people are really bad about reapplying. Really bad. So it's reapply. like if you kind of cover it with clothes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I don't go to the pool without a hat anymore. Like, well, it's just always on. Yeah. It protects your face, and you look great when that's, you wear that, that hat. I mean, that's you know? the key. That yeah. is the key. Yeah. You got to look good. Okay, let's talk about boat safety. This is the time of year when everybody wants to get out, and no. you hear all, I mean, you guys have to report to, far too often on yeah. drownings that happen. Tough. and. Yeah. It is so heartbreaking, and a lot of times it's preventable. So what's yes. the number one thing that it, you're recommending for boats? Well, again, when pe people say, like, I mean, people, I think, naturally understand that they're good swimmers, and they just rely on that. But, like, people are in canoes, and people are in boats, and people fall out. Right. Sometimes people are drinking. Right. Having a couple beers. Yeah. Um, I have a close family member of mine where they were on their normal fishing boat, and all of a sudden, something wonky happened where a couple really big waves and almost flipped their, their little fishing boat, yeah. was not wearing a, a life jacket, and, and you know, had they fallen off, hit their head, I mean, that's all it takes. So it has nothing to do with you being a good swimmer or not a good swimmer. Right. And we hear those sad stories every single summer. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a boat, there's absolutely no reason just to have your life jacket on. So if someone falls out or if like someone, you know, falls over and then you go to grab them and you want to help them out, if they're clinging onto you. People and, die trying to save right, others. Trying to save other yes. people. Then you can jump in there. If you're wearing a life jacket, you can jump in and grab anyone mm -hmm. and just in yeah. case they're not wearing theirs. Wow. All that happens so fast too. So it's Super just good just to, just to make it a routine. Yes. Do it. Yeah, absolutely. That's really important. Okay. We were talking about hydration a minute ago, but mm -hmm. bring the water. It's really right. important. Yes. Always bring more than you think you're going to. If you're going to go on a big, you know, you're going to go a big walk, a big hike, whatever else. I, I almost never hear of anyone saying, oh, yeah, I brought way too much water. <laughs> so um, in the end, it's always really good to have a couple extra bottles. Everybody, well, generally, you're going to find a best friend because they didn't bring any at all. Mm -hmm. yes. So now you've got your backpack. You've got an extra couple, couple bottles of water. And generally, if you're going to end up sharing it with someone else, 
there's at least always two or three people that didn't bring any water at all. So I saw a guy walking last night on the trail with yeah. a gallon of water. Yeah. Really? He was carrying his own gallon. Yeah. It was like halfway gone, but it was really, I thought, you're really getting Halfway? Wow. He I mean, was really know, going for a long ways. That's a long walk if you can do the whole gallon. I would that's say. What? Okay, these big trips when people yes. are going camping, yes. the, uh, the big key is making sure you've got those check-in times that people know where you're going. I mean, my neighbor goes up to the Boundary Waters, and it is like... Like, yeah, yeah I mean, it's so amazing yep. and luxurious to get off the grid, yes. but also that comes with a risk. Right. So I think having some good plans, I mean, no, kind of being ready for anything when it comes to weather mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. storms you know, come in pretty quick. Um, having a pretty good understanding that, you know, Boundary Waters and other areas in Minnesota, it gets really cold at night and get really hot during the day, right. you know, planning on kind of dressing like an onion, you know, mm -hmm. so you're taking off layers and putting on layers, you know, protecting yourself from the sun with the long sleeves, but then, you know, like making sure you've got your sunscreen too. So those are all helpful things. Um, communication is key. Cell phones don't work in all parts of Minnesota on a reliable basis. So if you do actually get yourself in trouble, like mm -hmm. having a way that you could communicate with other people just in case, mm -hmm. or if for some reason something happened, they would actually know where you're camping out yeah. generally. Yeah. Where you're going to be. Those where you're going to be. Yeah. When, once you get your camp set up, then you got to check each other for ticks. Oh, yes. gosh. Yes. And, and you guys just That's did a little. A great a, country song. A quick yes. thing about, <laughs> about ticks. The two things about ticks, um, DEET pre prevents ticks, um, prevents Lyme disease, and so you can put it on kids in lower amounts. So just remembering that you can use deep bug spray. That is a, a, a better way to prevent Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And then ticks have to be attached to you for a certain period of time before they can transmit Lyme disease. And you guys had a really great graphic on your last one yeah. where if a tick is only, only on you for 12 or 24 hours, that is just not long enough to transmit Lyme disease. So you get to be a little less concerned. If a tick is... You've been camping for three days and you're not really quite sure, well then it gets a little trickier, right? And then you're gonna talk to your primary care provider about like at what point do I need to be checked out for Lyme disease? Right. You know, check for those symptoms but of Lyme disease. But that helps to prevent the panic of like, I see yes. a tick, we were just out on the trails today, I yes. see a tick, oh my gosh, freak out, panic, yes. like yes. take a deep breath, faster. it's okay, right. you've yes. got some time. Probably don't need to be on an antibiotic okay. quite yet. Look at that. Put All put right, on. Okay. good to see you, sir. Thank you very Hey, much. if uh, you want to learn more about Entira Family Clinics, you can call them at 651-788-4444 or visit EntiraFamilyClinics.com. Thanks to Entira for sponsoring Twin Cities Live, we always get good info. Oh man, I learn something every single time.